Hey everyone and welcome to Zabbix series. In today's video we are going to be looking at basic Zabbix concepts. We will learn how to define our monitoring endpoints by creating hosts, how to collect necessary information by creating items, and how to use the collected information to detect problems by configuring our trigger expressions. If you're new to Zabbix or simply need a refresher course on basic Zabbix concepts, then this video is for you. So let's get going and learn the ropes. Our demonstration will be performed on a completely fresh Zabbix 6.2 instance. We will start with creating our first host. From the default global dashboard view, let's navigate to configuration, hosts. By default, we should see a single host representing our Zabbix server instance. This host is used for self-monitoring and helps us track the health of our Zabbix instance. I have also deployed a Linux server machine in my demo environment with a Zabbix agent installed on it. This will be the host that we will start monitoring today. Let's create a host for my Linux server. Click the Create Host button. So what is a host? A host is a monitoring endpoint. A host can represent a device, an application, a service, a website, or any other type of monitoring endpoint that we wish to monitor with Zabbix. The host creation consists of providing a set of mandatory and optional parameters, which will very much depend on the type of our monitoring endpoint and the method of data collection that we will use. First, we have to define a host name. This is a unique name that represents our host. The host name plays an important role in active agent checks, but we are not going to cover that today. Feel free to check out our documentation and read more about the difference between active and passive checks and the role that the host name plays in active checks. For this reason, we may also sometimes wish to define a visible name. In this case, the underlying host name will be different from the visible name, which we will see in the Zabbix frontend. For example, we could design a set of rules for naming our hosts in a somewhat detailed fashion while defining the visible names in a simplified manner to make the daily Zabbix workflows easier for our team. Next, in the templates section, we can choose to assign a number of templates to our host. Templates already contain predefined items, triggers, graphs, and discovery rules, and we can select to use the official Zabbix templates, create our own templates, or import community templates from the Zabbix community template repository. For this video, we will not be using any templates. Instead, we will create our first set of items and triggers directly on this host. A host must belong to at least a single host group, but is not limited by the number of host groups it can belong to. Host groups are used for filtering, assigning read-write permissions, and some other parts of Zabbix logic. Let's assign our host to the existing Linux servers host group and a new host group called Zabbix series. Interfaces are directly related to passive item types. When we say passive, we mean items that get pulled by a Zabbix server or a proxy. Usually interfaces are used to specify the address or the DNS name that we are pulling for metrics. We can have four types of interfaces, Zabbix Passive Agent, SNMP, JMX, and IPMI. It is worth noting that the Zabbix Active Agent checks do not require an interface. Interfaces can be mixed and matched, and we can also configure multiple interfaces of the same type. This can be useful if our monitoring endpoint has multiple network cards, or if for some reason a single host represents multiple monitoring endpoints. For this video, I have deployed a Zabbix agent on my Linux server. Since we will use Zabbix agent items to collect the necessary metrics, we need to provide a Zabbix agent interface. The description field can be used to provide additional information about the host to our team members. Lastly, if we have a single or multiple Zabbix proxies deployed in our environment, the monitored by proxy dropdown will allow us to specify which proxy should monitor this host. Since we haven't deployed any Zabbix proxies, we will simply leave this field with the no proxy value and let Zabbix server directly monitor this host. At the top of the host configuration screen, we can switch between multiple different tabs where we can configure additional attributes for our host, such as IPMI security settings, provide tags and user macros, configure the host inventory mode, 
enable encryptions for connections to and from host, create value maps for discrete metrics, and more. For today's demonstration, let's tag our host with environment demo. Tags can be used for filtering, assigning permissions, providing additional information about our environment, and more. Once we have finished, click on the Add button to create the host. Note the gray ZBX icon under the Availability column next to our host. These icons represent the interface status for the interfaces that we have created for our hosts. Since we haven't created any Zabbix agent items on this host, the interface remains grayed out, meaning it's in an unknown state. Let's create some items on our host. Click the Items button next to the host to navigate to the Items section. Items are used to define the metrics that we are going to be collecting on the current host. Click the Create Item button to define our first item. For our first item, let's collect the current CPU load. Start by giving your item a descriptive name. Next, select the item type. There are many types of items to choose from, from Zabbix Agent to HTTP checks, calculated and dependent items, as well as custom scripts and commands. We can categorize the items into two types, passive items and active items. Passive items use polling to collect the required metrics, meaning the Zabbix server or Zabbix proxy polls the endpoint and collects the required metrics. For active checks, it works the other way around. The metrics are sent to the Zabbix server or Zabbix proxy autonomously from the endpoint. To keep things simple, we will be using the Zabbix agent item type. Note that we are not using the Zabbix agent active item type, since for this video, we will be using passive checks. Next, we have to define a key. The key needs to be unique per host, and for most item types, it is used to specify which metric are we going to collect from our endpoint. Pressing the select button will bring up a list of keys for the specific item type. Let's find system CPU load and click on it to select it as our key. The brackets next to the key contain two parameters which are enclosed in parentheses. Parameters which are enclosed in parentheses usually have a default value and can be removed. Let's open Zabbix documentation and look at the default values for the system CPU load item. Here we can see that the default value for the CPU parameter is all meaning that we will collect the load statistics for all CPUs on the host. As for the mode, the default value is average 1, collect 1 minute average CPU load. If we wish to use values other than the default ones, we have to manually type them in as our key parameters. For the sake of simplicity, let's use the default values for our first item and remove the parameters. The type of information gets picked out automatically but we might want to change it if we use advanced pre-processing and transform our item value to a different data type before storing it in Zabbix history. Host interface refers to the interface that we defined during the host creation. If a host has multiple interfaces of the same type, the particular interface can be selected here. Units can be used to make the display of your value more comprehensive. Common unit values include bits or bytes, percentage, Fahrenheit or Celsius temperature units, and more. You are free to specify a unit that makes sense for the current item. Note that units do not affect how the item is stored. They serve only as a visual aid to make reading the collected values easier. Our CPU load value does not have a unit, so we will leave this out for now. Update interval specifies how often the endpoint is polled and the item value is collected. Be careful with this parameter, since it will directly impact the number of values stored, therefore impacting the size of your Zabbix database. Optionally, we can also add a description to our CPU load item. Before we finish up, let's define a tag for this item. Click on the Tags tab. Here, add a tag component CPU. Once you have added the tag, move to the main item configuration window. 
There are many other item configuration fields that we can define, but for our first example, the current configuration will be sufficient. Let's click Add to add our very first item. Next, let us create another item. This time, we will collect our incoming traffic on the host. Once again, click the Create Item button. Specify the item name and type. Next, let's select the incoming traffic key. Note that the first parameter is mandatory for this item key. Here we have to specify our interface name. The default mode for this item is used to collect the traffic in bytes, which is what we're looking for. By default, this item works like a counter, providing us the value of total collected traffic since the item creation. If we wish to collect incoming traffic per second, we need to use preprocessing. Let's open the preprocessing tab. Click Add to add a preprocessing step. We will use the change per second preprocessing step to collect traffic per second. We will also add a second preprocessing step, custom multiplier, and multiply our collected values by 8, thus obtaining bits instead of bytes. Let's move back to the main item configuration window. Now let's specify the update interval. This time we will also specify units. Since we used preprocessing to transform the collected values from bytes to bits per second, let's use the BPS unit. This will help us to avoid the confusion regarding the units in which this value is collected. Let's also make things more simple for our team members by adding a description for our incoming traffic item. Finally, let's add a tag for this item. Click on the Tags tab. Next, let's add two tags, Components Network and Interface, our interface name. Click Add to add your second item. By default, Zabbix applies the configuration changes once a minute, so let's wait for a moment and navigate to Monitoring, Latest Data. In the Hosts filter, let's select our host and click Apply. Here we can see the last received value and the change between the current and the previous value. Next, let's navigate to Configuration, Hosts. Note that the ZBX interface next to our host is now green. This means that metrics are now being successfully collected on the agent interface of this host. Finally, let's try and create a trigger to analyze our collected values for problems. Click on the Triggers button next to your host. Here, click the Create Trigger button. Let's try and detect spikes in our CPU load. Start by giving your trigger a name. Problem events generated by this trigger can either inherit the trigger name or you can use the event name field to specify a different name. Operational data field can be used to provide additional information about the current values analyzed by this trigger. Let's configure the operational data field to provide us the latest value of the CPU load on this host. Each trigger requires to have a severity assigned to it. Severity can be used to visually highlight the significance of a problem as well as define the alerting workflows specific to each severity. The trigger expression is the most vital part of your trigger. A trigger expression is used to define the logic for evaluating the collected metrics. If a trigger expression is evaluated as true, a problem will be generated. Let's click Add to define the trigger expression. First, let's select our CPU load item. Next, we have to select a function which we will use to analyze the trigger. Zabbix offers a large selection of functions, from simple analysis of last 
average, minimum, and maximum values, to functions used for anomaly and baseline monitoring, string functions, mathematical functions, and many others. For our example, let's use the minimum trigger function. We will analyze the minimum value for the last one minute and create a problem if the minimum value is greater than one. Now press insert to add the expression. As with our items, let's also add a description for this trigger. Let's add a tag to this trigger. Navigate to the Tags tab. Here, let's add a tag, Scope Performance. Once the tag is added, move to the main trigger configuration window. There are many other trigger options, such as resolving a problem based on a recovery expression, correlating a problem based on the problem tags, generating a new problem every time a trigger is re-evaluated, and more. But for today, we will make do with the simple trigger right here. If you wish to learn more about different trigger functions and best practice approaches for Zabbix problem detection, I recommend registering for the official Zabbix training courses. The full 5-day Zabbix certified specialist course will teach you not only about items and triggers, but also about Zabbix installation and configuration, Zabbix alerting logic, creating custom Zabbix dashboards, and many other useful Zabbix features. Finally, once we are done with configuring our trigger, let's press the Add button to add it. Now let's stress our CPU and see how the trigger reacts to increased CPU load. If I refresh the trigger section, I can see that my trigger is in a problem state now. Let's navigate to Monitoring, Problems, and see how the problem event looks like. Here we can see that a new problem event has been generated. We can observe the duration since the start of the problem, as well as all of the tags the event has inherited from hosts, items, and triggers. To observe the operational data, we have to click on the Show Operational Data separately or with Problem Name buttons. Once we apply the changes to the problem view, we can see the last received value of the CPU load under the Operational Data tab. We can see that our host items and trigger have been created successfully and are working as expected. Remember, this is just the beginning. There is a lot more out there to learn about different Zabbix elements, their configuration, and the flexibility that they offer. I hope that this will serve as a useful guide for your first steps in Zabbix. Thank you for your interest in Zabbix, and I will see you next time.